Coach, you called the game yesterday frustrating. How would you describe the team's mindset a uh, day after a loss like that? Well, always disappointing. You know, when you lose and, and you lose the stretch of games that we've lost, um, particularly, you know, going to the last three games at halftime, we feel like we're in control and doing the things we set out to do. And then in the third quarter, we haven't we haven't accomplished our mission there. And and that leads to frustration. I think everyone's handling it the right way, but um, there's nothing wrong with being frustrated and disappointed. And but but we got to put it behind us and, and uh, get focused on Dallas this week very quickly. Zach, any update on Jonah Williams? Not yet. Nothing on Jonah. Probably by the next press conference, I'll have that. Zach, what went into the decision to start Michael Jordan or the guards, I guess, yesterday and compared to, you know, where Suofilo was and being able to come back? And, and how did you feel like that situation played out? Well, obviously, um, you know, Xavier coming off, coming off IR and practicing the last couple of weeks, um, felt like it was right to go with Mike Jordan. And then, and then Mike, obviously we pulled him there for that last drive and put Xavier back in there. And um, so again, that's, that's one of those tough decisions we got to make with the guards with really a lot of the offensive line when we got guys get hurt, guys come back, um, shuffling through all that, trying to find the right chemistry amongst those five guys has, has not been an easy task. You know, every week it seems like um, it's, it's a new group out there working together. And so again, that's a challenge. And that's something we'll have to keep working through this week. So was you that feel like Suofilo maybe oh, sorry, Jay. Do you feel like Suofilo maybe couldn't have, you know, conditioning wise, have played a full game, and that was part of the decision? Or um, no, I wouldn't say that. It was just, it's just a coaching decision, you know, to put the personnel out there. But but um, I, I would say that he's he's gotten himself back now to where he's in position to play for us. Yeah, I was gonna say, was it was it a, a knock the rust off kind of decision for for Xavier, or was it Mike's not getting the job done decision? Yeah, I mean, we had to look at some things in that last drive. You know, he, he'd given up a couple of pressures and sacks there, and it was time to do something different. Zach, what, why do you think where things have not go? gone well in the second halves of the majority of the games this year? Yeah, that's that's something that we're, we're addressing, you know, with our guys. And, um, you know, in the last four games on offense, uh, you can look at a start. We've, we've had a drop pass on either the first drive of the third quarter, the second drive of the third quarter that have stunted drives immediately. You know, and, and so, again, that's not an issue we've had in the first half. You know, guys have done a great job there. So um, we got to find something that gives us that spark because we really started the first seven, eight games. Uh, we thought we were coming out like gangbusters in the third quarter, really, and playing well, uh, particularly that stretch right before the bye. And then you turn around right after the bye, and it's been the opposite. Really, the last four weeks has been an issue for us. And and uh, that's a key to something that we got to change if we're going to win these games on the stretch because, um, you know, the, these first halves have, have been dirty and, and – a grind, but um, like I said, we go into halftime feeling good about the control that we have in the game, and then third quarter hasn't been that way. Coach, when you look at um, the defensive side of the ball, held them to 10% conversion on third downs, and you don't really have to worry about your safeties. It looked like you found a right combination between Bell and Jesse Bates back there. I agree with that. You know, they, they held those guys to field goals. They were one in 10 on third down. They are one in four in the red zone scoring. Um, offensively, we scored seven points. You know, and, and really scored seven points last week, and and uh, you know we, we got to do a better job of of finding production, moving the ball down the field. Even when we get in the red zone, we get we got to hit the field goals. We hit, you know, we had a couple couple opportunities there that we missed, um, but we got to find a way to get those points on the board because um, these haven't had to be 30, 40 scoring efforts to win these games. These have been kind of a race to twenty in a lot of extents, and uh, we haven't done enough good job good enough job on offense the last three weeks, particularly. Zach, would there be any benefit to, to letting somebody else call plays? Um, I'm comfortable with how we're doing it right now. When you how much talk do you put in the, the notion of halftime adjustments? Do we, do we overrate that or is there something to that? There's a mix to that. You know, we're making adjustments throughout the entire game. Um, halftime really for us feels about like five minutes. You're in there quickly. Um, so we're talking throughout the first quarter, the second quarter. Again, we felt like our production was, was really good. Um, the first eight weeks of the season there. And, um, you know, these last three weeks have been a struggle for us to, to find some offense. And it, it's been a real challenge. And so we got to continue to look at everything we can do to, to find that production in the third quarter that will help us get a win. When you came into the locker room with a score seven to six instead of potentially ten to three with what transpired right before the half, did you have to uh, do anything to lift spirits or were guys in pretty good uh, shape in that regard? What was it like at halftime? Well, again, you know, it was disappointing the way we ended the half on offense and defense, you know, missing a field goal there. And then uh, and really feeling like we were in great scoring position there with the ball in the 20-yard line. And 
um, three plays, got no yards there, and and then giving up the field goal on defense. And so that's not the way we wanted to go in the half. But again, we, we felt like we we played the way we set out to play the game and um, had two potential scoring drives there at the end of the half on offense. Defense had done a good job holding them at that point um, to a field goal before they give up that last one. So I, I think the spirits were good. We felt like we were in control and and uh, felt like we were in a good spot there at halftime. Zach, why has the running game struggled so much the last couple of weeks? It looked like you were making some progress along the way. Is it as simple as all the all the different combinations up front, or is there something you can pinpoint? Well, I mean, if you if you saw what they did, they 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 dared us to throw the football. You know, they they played a jam front every snap. They strangled the tight end. They put an extra guy in the box, and they played man coverage across the board. And and you're gonna have to move some people up front. You're gonna have to break some tackles in the run game. Um, we knew that was not a game we want to drop back and throw the ball 50 times. We were going to grind out some runs and some nakeds. And um, again, it was it was a dirty game in the first half, and that's how we intended to play it. When we got down two scores there, because we had the two three and outs in the third quarter, the game took a turn, and 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 we had to do something that we didn't want to do going into that game. You've had a number of different offensive lines this year. Can you describe the value that Jonah Williams has had, kind of solidifying that left tackle spot? Yeah, I think, you know, everybody on offense has kind of had their ups and downs and, and we need more consistency across the board from everybody. Um, Jonah obviously has played, I, I don't know what, eight games in his NFL career. Um, so he hasn't had the, the fluid stretch that he anticipated. You know, he played some and then he missed a couple uh, with, with the injury, with the stinger injury. And now he's going to miss, you know, we, we don't know yet, but but you can guess um, it could be a couple of weeks. It could be ready to go this weekend. We don't know yet, but. Um, certainly not the, the season he anticipated having with the injuries and the, and the consistent flow um, and the rhythm he can get into. And, um, but, you know, he, he's shown some good things for us. Does he have the tools that you're looking for from the left tackle? And if so, what, what tools about him do you like about him? Well, I think he's got a great football IQ. He's got quick feet. Um, he helps us in the run game. He does a lot of good things for us. Coach, when you mentioned the drop in the, the third quarter and, and little things like that that can derail drives, and get the offense out of rhythm. How did the, the players overcome that? Because obviously they have to make plays. How do you teach them that or instill that? How, how do you go about that? Well, I, I don't just want to give coach speak and just say we got to do a better job. You know, we got to, whether it's it's the types of plays we're calling there to start the third quarter, um, making sure we're all on the same page. But but again, um, the bottom line is we just have to execute what we do. We got to put us in the best positions as coaching staff and we got to execute the plays that we call. And, um, get us off to a better start, but back to what we were doing before the bye. Do you think you have? Do you think you have those answers moving forward, or is it something where you have to get back to the drawing board? Yes, we feel like we will have those answers going forward, James. Zach, it seems like William Jackson has played well as of late. Just how would you assess uh, kind of his performance over the last few games? Yeah, I, I thought he was very competitive. Devontae Parker is a tough matchup. Um, obviously he had some, some DPI penalties there, but, uh, Will fought his tail off, you know, and, and, you know, if I can remember, he gave up three receptions to him and had the two DPIs, but, um, was certainly challenged and, and was physical and stayed right in his pocket. And again, that's, that's when you're the number one corner and you're going against a really good number one receiver, you're going to have your challenges during the game, but, um, was proud of the way that, that Will competed in that game. Zach, you mentioned after the game that, um, Mike Thomas was early on the second punt coverage and you said you wanted to take a good look at the first one yeah. after doing that what do you think perfectly legal completely yeah. legal. yep the receiver was able to touch the ball um and mike mike did not hit him in the header neck area right uh, there's a training video we were sent on august 11th with the exact same hit and it was perfectly legal and and could have been a if we'd gotten the fumble that would have been a big play for us obviously they called a penalty on the play um but that was a perfectly legal hit there's no halo in pro football, right? There is in college football, but it, you, you can be right on top of him as soon as he touches the ball. He's free bait, right? Correct. Zach, why, why was he even in the game as the gunner? We never got any sort of injury report or anything on Brandon Wilson. Uh, Brandon had a uh, groin injury on Friday, and um, it just kind of acted up on him early in the first half to where, where he didn't feel like he could go. Do you think that that played a role in the second one? Just Mike having not played Gunner all year. I know he's probably practiced it, but he's not played in the game. Yeah. I mean, you, you gotta you gotta really look at the situation he was in. Um, you know, Mike, Mike is just he's trying to make a play. And when you're a gunner running full speed down the field and the returner starts to put his hands up, you have no idea where the ball's at. You know, so you have to assume that it's in the close proximity, kind of like the first one he had. And and again, you you gotta put your head across across his body and make sure you're not making contact with your helmet and his helmet. Um, it's tough. You got to make a split second decision. And there's a chance that that ball is going to drop right before, like the first one did. And he's making a great hit. 
Um, if you feel like you're getting there too soon, you got to be able to break down and, and wait till you see him touch the ball. Uh, but again, Mike was just trying to play fast. He's not trying to injure anybody. He got there. He got there a tick too soon. That's obvious. Um, but again, that's that's part of playing Gunner. You know, Mike's got great speed and he beats the uh, beats the corner right off the snap and got there probably sooner than most guys would get there. And, and that was part of the problem. So by rule, coach, the, the return guy is the defenseless player. You can't hit him in the head or neck area. But that's the only thing. If he didn't hit him in the head or neck area, totally legal play. As long as he's made contact with the ball. Right. And you do not hit him in the head or neck area. Right. Um, which Mike didn't either on that first return. Right. Is that what they thought? Did they ever say anything to you? Did they think that he hit him in the head? Did they ever declare that? Because they, they said they said it wasn't, you know, early. They said it wasn't before the ball's arrival. So I guess that's the only assumption you can make. They, they thought that he hit him because he put his head to the outside of his body yeah. and hit him shoulder and never hit his head right yeah, some, sometimes yeah sometimes during the game you can hear several things but but you know what happened because you can see the replay very quickly so you know what happened Zach is Nick Cosgray okay we saw that he got knocked down uh in the brawl was he was he all right yeah Nick's okay you know we we had a uh, a player hit um on a blindside block there there was no flag thrown whatsoever um you know and so Sean gets up and he's got an entire team on top of him you know and so uh Nick's fine uh Nick will be fine Sean will be fine uh, but that was that was a, a tough situation. You know, Zach, you've also, you know, I think the offensive line ended up giving up seven sacks yesterday. It's been a point of contention uh, throughout the year. How do you feel like that unit is performing after yesterday and especially after what happened to Jonah? Yeah, it wasn't good enough yesterday. You know, it kind of each guy had their error there to put pressure on the quarterback, or give up a sack, and, and that's not the way we can play. You know, that was um, a tough look for us yesterday. Coach, on the on – the, uh... The, the play where there were ejections, multiple ejections in the first half, New York said they can't call a penalty that an official didn't call. Yet it seemed like they called a penalty the official didn't call when Sean Williams got blindsided. I never saw any flag on that hit, yet they made that offsetting. How, how, did, they, how did they kind of uh, make both of those equations equal? Yeah, there's a lot of things I didn't like. You know, I, I thought TB got hit late. Um, out of bounds to, to start the whole thing and and uh, did not throw the first punch, but yet he's the one that got penalized and they both got ejected. And that's very frustrating when you're standing right there watching the whole situation along with everybody else and and uh, we take the brunt of it. But but what New York, what the rule is, is that they cannot put a flag on the field. They can eject players, but they cannot put a flag on the field. And so they said that, um, even though I never saw it, that there was a flag dropped on Tyler Boyd um, and so they could not go back. And, and uh, I know that the, the rule is New York cannot go back and put another flag on the field. They can only make an ejection. I didn't you see never flag. saw the first flag, right? No, I never saw any first flag. No, I, there was a couple of times I never saw a flag, but there was a penalty after the fact. In the, in, in the other situation, Sean, I never saw a flag thrown on the illegal block on Sean, yet they said on, uh, New York said that it was offset and they never threw a flag. Yeah, that would be the other situation that I'm referring to. But but the bottom line is, Dave, you know, we, we have to play better. Uh, we have to control the things that we can control. And and we got to find ways to put points on the board. And and we did not do that yesterday. And so that that's that's on all of us as players and coaches to find those ways to, um, again, just control the things that we can control and put points on the board and get stops coming out in the third quarter like we need to and um, do the things that, that a winning football team needs to do. How's Brendan Allen doing? And what do you think of his game yesterday? Yeah, Brandon Allen's doing much better. You know, he's uh, he he was kind of a, a really bad got the wind knocked out of him situation. Um, I was kind of staying there the whole time with him, and it's it was, sometimes those deals you get your wind back, you know, in 30, 45 seconds, and this one just took much longer, and he was really struggling there. But um, other than just general soreness, he'll be okay. One last question. Yeah, Zach, Zach, do you think that the the injuries to, to all the key players you've had this year are going to make it more difficult for ownership to evaluate the job that you and your assistants have done this year? We, we just have to, to get the most out of the players that we have in this locker room right now and find ways to win games, you know, and um, again, in the National Football League, you can't make any excuses for, for things that happen to you. You just, you got to find a way to come to work, you get the most out of yourself, get the most out of the players, um, put together a great plan that puts them in good position to go execute. And, and that's all that our focus is on right now.